Uh, welcome again, everybody, to This Week in Gaming with Slightly Salted Squad. Thanks for joining us today, June 19th, for episode 31, where we're going to be talking about Cyberpunk 2077, Modern Cross-Dressing, Breath of the Wild 2, some things I'm not probably allowed to say on air, and more. We appreciate you watching or listening, whether it be live on twitch.tv slash Slightly Salted Squad, or later on YouTube, or your favorite podcast network. If you haven't yet, check us out on Twitter and Instagram for news and updates. If you want to support us, click those follow subscribe buttons or check us out at patreon.com slash slightly salt squad. Most importantly though, if you actually want to play with us, make sure you check out our official Discord, which you can link to from our Twitch page, twitch.tv slash slightly salt squad. Enough of that. As always, I'm John at Force Inept. I'm Mike at Thresh. I'm Dion at Underdog. Then new new. New, new, new name, who dis? So new. new name, who dis? Uh, real quick, uh, I guess just non news related, we've got tons of E3 footage. Thank you, Dion, for putting up a bunch of our old videos. Uh, we did yep. our um, impressions of E3 <clears throat> in this week of gaming last week, episode 30, which was appropriate. And then episode, f- or sorry, in Squad Thoughts uh, this past Sunday, Father's Day actually, we talked over who we thought won E3 quote-unquote one and who lost so definitely check those out you can get those all on youtube or podcasts so there you go they on the youtubes uh anything you guys want to talk about before we start no let's do this cool Are also you? woo back to you t gaps woo back yeah. to you. yeah well deserved woo nice job team. there it is it's just a light my shit getting into that news uh we've got more fallout fallout it's been a while guys but our tried and true method of starting the show out with fallout fallout is here and we're gonna see if my macros actually work mother they won't work (laughs) i just have to click oh well I just have to click studio mode multiple times, uh, then it'll work. But luckily, we're on this for a while at least. Uh, so, if you guys have been with us for the past uh, 30 episodes or so, um, you've been hearing us talk about Fallout 76, how there was a giant bag controversy. Um, scrolling down here, you can see what they initially looked like. They were super flimsy plastic bags. It was in the collector's edition. You got the helmet. Paid a lot of money for them. They were advertised as special canvas. And then uh, you get these shitty little trash bags. But, uh-huh. uh, let's see, six, uh, eight months later, finally got your bags. They are they look all right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, they look like yeah. better than they did. They, they do look better than they did. Um, do you think that's worth the collector's edition? Um, <laughs> to be fair, I feel like that's that's like not a great photo of them. There are better photos out there. At least some of the ones that oh, I've okay. seen, they actually do look more. Can see if I can find a better one. Yeah, exactly. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Pharaoh, uh, active Bethesda fanboy, uh, is not a fan of this and or Bethesda. It's true. Yeah, we'll give that away. Bethesda is a fucking <laughs> joke. Pharaoh Games. Yeah. Thanks. Um. Yeah. I mean. It looks okay. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what there is to really dissect in this, right? Yeah. Super. There's not much. Super late. Eight months Game late. Game didn't do well. It's like you know, here it is, I guess. And hey, but I, I think Mike's right though. I think the picture would be. I think there is yeah. a better like. There was I think one it looks better was on Twitter. There, yeah, there was one that was on Twitter yeah. that actually looked really cool, and I was like, oh man, all right. But I don't. I don't know <laughs> if I'll be able to find it again. Well, luckily we do have NPCs coming in Fallout seventy six in this. This fall, and now there's going to be a battle royale, which apparently the shrouds go to battle royale again. So uh, there's that, I guess. Speaking of battle royales, though, John transition right there. Apex Legends tweeted out about mm-hmm. seven hours ago, eight hours ago. Um, oh, never mind. Earlier today, alert unauthorized entry. Um, you have a little gif here, it looks like some sort of maybe dragon, and then a bunch of little red dots along the map. People quickly began seeing dragons, which in G-D the game are... GD dragons. GD dragons. The theme from Bethesda, 
Uh, apparently, carrying over to Respawn Entertainment and EA from E3, um, dragons slash flyers, when you actually tag them on the map, are in Apex Legends. And it's unknown right now whether they are stealing uh, the... Oh, now I'm blanking on the names. The death boxes? Yeah, the death, death box, loot box, whatever you want to call it. Um, yep. Or if they just happen to have them from, you know, other people maybe they found, you know, not actual players. Uh, but you can shoot them and they drop stuff and they fly around. And there's a bunch of women. So there you go. I'm going to scroll down there. <laughs> so yeah, we got that. Dragons. I'm not going to lie. This cool. kind of makes it's... me want to play it just to like see them. But... I mean, it's a cool little add-on. You know, I don't... I don't... It's cool if like they they fly around, especially if like you're in something active and maybe you didn't get to loot somebody that like you kind of see that flying around and you know you can grab it. But I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It'll be interesting to see how this sort of plays into season two. Um, during the the EA play, they did sort of tease this with the picture of the eyeball at the end, and it seems yep. much bigger than what we're seeing these little sort of whelplings flying around here. So um, it'll be interesting to see sort of what. Uh, comes to pass with all this stuff going on. Yeah, uh, I'm assuming it's a lead-in. It just seems kind of random that they dropped it today. Um, I mean, without much, I guess, to do besides a tweet. Um, also, Pharaoh, I'm not going to get banned because first of all, is YouTube. Second of all, Twitch doesn't even ban people permanently that go stream from the restroom. So, I mean, there you go. True. That's a thing. Topical. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, Apex. Uh, we'll... Keep you updated. I I do want to get back into it because I really don't have a PC game right now to play besides Eve Online. I kind of served, which I'll talk about later. Uh, but yeah, because I'm waiting for Cyberpunk 2077. Holy shit, it's coming! You have like, I mean, yeah, I like agree with eight that. months to play something else. <laughs> I, you, uh, got you got time. A, we have ten. You out of everybody, you have a super ton depressing. of games that you could be playing right now, though. Me? Yeah. I have multiple yes, games. You. Weird. Oh, speaking of that, side note, uh, you can check out our schedule uh, we've posted where we've got the yeah. Platinum yeah. Grind for Sredge. Uh, we've got the Backlog with Underdog. And then Whoop. VR Training with your Truly for Snapped. Mine is not every Thursday because once a month I do play D&D with another group, which we stream at twitch.tv slash mythbrigade if you want to check that out. Uh, nice. Which is actually tomorrow night, so kind of shitty timing on me finally creating that schedule. But anyways, back to uh, Cyberpunk 2077. Already you could have pre-ordered PC versions, standard editions, non-physical. Um, you could pre-order PlayStation and Xbox, both regular and collector's edition. I don't think there's a deluxe offhand. So a lot of people, myself included, pre-ordered the collector's edition for those because there was not a collector's, collector's edition for PC. That, however, will be coming out for pre-order availability tomorrow. That is June 20th at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific for U.S. and Canada. GameStop, Can you Amazon, remind Best me Buy. what's uh, in the collectors? Uh, yeah, great question. I don't know why I didn't pull this up. Uh, let's see. So I'm definitely going to hop on that. I waited because I, I knew that I was only going to get it on PC. So Yeah, so I was kind of unnecessarily well you know as yeah I normally, you do a lot as i normally do um i pre-ordered it just in case it didn't come to pc and Fair. then i'm going to cancel my playstation one um if i'm able to get a pc which one which i assume i will but um here we go this image is being kind of annoying here we go so uh actually let me that so we got this. Sorry, I'm got... doing this on the fly. Yeah, no, all good. Um, you get a sweet box. You get a game. You get a world compendium. You get postcards. You get stickers. You get embroidered patches. You get steel book. You get metal keychain. You get a sweet bike statue. I'm sold. Yeah. You get a bunch of digital content. What's the the price point on that one again? I think it was like two hundred dollars. Two forty nine ninety nine. Yep, two forty nine ninety nine. I was just checking. Yeah. 
To be fair, you get a lot for it. I don't think the statue quality is probably good as the Final Fantasy VII Remake. And it's cheaper and you get a lot more other things with it. So yeah, 250. Yeah. 250 is a lot, but at the same time, this game, from everything anybody's saying, is just like amazing and we'll actually get into that in shortly here in a second uh real quick though they are on their official twitter uh posting some pretty cool images or actually real quick collector's edition for pc if you want that 1 p.m eastern tomorrow gamestop amazon best buy eb games um amazon's well i think all of them you don't need to do a full down payment amazon you pay when you do it so you got you know 10 months to save 250 bucks there you go 25 bucks a month there you go it's reasonable, right? Oh. When you do that, yeah. yeah. How much better is the game if I buy the collector's edition? Uh, four, four and a half times better. Four and a half. Wow. Based on the All price, right. yeah, that's what yeah, I think okay. it comes out to. So, uh, yeah, neat. So there you go. Um, yeah, we're gonna get into some more. But images have been posted on their official Twitter. Just pretty cool artwork, kind of background things. Yeah. Um, so they got, and I'm a blank on her name already. These two guys, or this female hacker, this guy that kind of drug lord, whatever you want. Dex. Dex. Um, that's in the CGI trailer. Then you got these really cool movie posters that each have a different theme. So you got this first one, style and substance. So you got that blend there. You got substance over style, which looks like clearly the, like the evil guys. You got style over substance, which is a badass car with four wheels in the front, two in the back. I'm not gonna lie, looks That's like a crazy 1999 Alicia Silverstone. Yeah, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Didn't see that until you just said that, but uh, yeah. Uh, and then you got necessity over style, which is pretty cool too. So. I love how they're kind of highlighting the different environments and stuff like that with mm -hmm. just, you know, fairly simple artwork that they're throwing out there. So, pretty cool. So pumped. So pumped. Ten months away. And, hell, we'll probably get delayed. But, um, you know, if it gets delayed, there's going to be more and more content. Not this game's probably going to have enough content as it is. Uh, but they did say that... There's likely going to be expansions, which are three style for Cyberpunk 2077. So, uh, which are three had a few paid DLC expansions for it, but they were substantial DLCs too. They added tons of story yes. to them. Um, yeah, Mike, you platinumed all of it, right? So you did Hearts of Stone uh, and Blood and Wine? Platinum, the core game. I did not collect all the trophies for the expansions, but I did play through them. Gotcha. Cool. And thoughts just as good as the main game? Uh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of times you get those sort of expansions that don't feel complete or they don't feel like they really belong. <laughs> and just like kind of where did all this stuff come from? Uh, right. But this really felt like part of The Witcher. So yeah. I thoroughly enjoyed that game from front to back. And that's actually one of the reasons I'm kind of tempted to get Witcher 3 on the Switch is because I never did play through the expansions. So Yeah, it's the uh, collector's uh, edition or the uh, the ultimate yeah, edition it's or whatever. A complete, it's got yeah, everything. Whatever it is. Edition. So. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so went on, they said, we're talking about expansions in the future. We want to make sure everything is complete, but we also want to build open worlds. I know when I was playing the Witcher three and I finished everything, I still wanted to know what everyone was up to. I think we're going to have opportunities like that as well for cyberpunk 2077. That's great. So pretty cool. Mm -hmm. That's great. I mean, I, you know, I had a little bit of an expectation of this to an extent just cause it's CD project. Uh, but you know, it's just really good to have that affirmation that they're going to treat this just like that and, and have some good, robust expansions um, that give mm -hmm. us more um, in-depth knowledge into the world that we're going to all be sucked into, right? Yep. Yeah, dude. Can't, can't come fast enough. Hype is there, sure. man. I'm yeah. ready. Um, obviously, we talked about it already, but um, I have been hearing, like, through different podcasts and stuff, impressions from the floor people that haven't played it but have watched the different trailers and stuff like that and just saying that it seems like a game from the future as far as the actual dynamics of it and the destructible environment and things like that uh, there's a great interview over at metro.co.uk uh, where they interviewed the lead quest designer Paulette Sasko I probably butchered that 
um, Empaw at Tesco. Uh, Leave the Quest team goes on. It's a huge article. Um, good interview, and they talk about some of the things as far as, I guess, some of the demos not as maybe clean as what we saw E3 2018 um, and saw, you know, kind of some fumbling of AI and things like that. But they also talked about it's pretty much content complete at this point. So the next, how you know, 10 months or whatever, I mean, it's a digital game, so 10 months are going to be for fine-tuning and polishing, which is super encouraging. Pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, and they have a team of 450 people, which is kind of crazy for, yeah, what this game is. So definitely check it out. Uh, we can, actually, let me just link in the chat right now. Yeah, Pharaoh, I hear you. Take off work for a week. And we've kind of talked a little bit already. You play character V, and it, you have you know cool points and strong body, I think it's called, and dexter. So it's basically D&D, &D, as close as you can get to in the video game, it sounds like, as far as creating your character, RPing your character, you get background choices, things like that. And play like male or female, all these different things, and you can really kind of RP that character. You can hack everything you want, or you can just be the strong dude that just rips doors off everything and murders people. So, and you can also allegedly go through the game without killing anybody. I probably won't be doing that option at least at first. But games like you that couldn't even if you tried, John. Uh probably true. I would probably be a pacifist that ends up murdering like everybody by mistake or something. I've seen you try to play stealth games. They don't. They don't work for you. Uh, Pharaoh comments this game might be coming out next year, but it truly sounds like a next gen title. Yeah, honestly, it sounds like mm -hmm. end of next gen title from what everybody's describing. So we'll see it if it lives up to the hype. Um, they did say it would be being ported, obviously, immediately to the next gen consoles as well. So curious to see a little more about that one. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Next up. Um, Coming off of E3, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Um, probably the two most talked about games of the show um, from kind of what I've seen and heard. The famous cross-dressing mission in Final Fantasy VII is more modern in the remake. Um, so more for modern. those of you that have not ever played Final Fantasy VII, this probably sounds like insanity. Spoilers. Uh, there is a mission... Where essentially, I'm not going to say who, someone kind of gets taken to a place um, where this evil guy is. And to get into the building, Cloud does try to dress up like a woman. Depending on how you do these kind of little side missions to get like a wig and perfume and a dress. You can get varying qualities of them. Like you can get really a shitty dress, you can get a really shitty wig, you can get uh, really bad perfume, or you can get all the best stuff. And depending on what your outfit and combination is, you have different interactions in the play. So it's actually pretty cool, especially for a game that old, to have these different dynamics like that. Um, but the uh, director, uh, Testuya Nomura, um, says the scene will be in the game, but change for a modern audience. The Honey Bee Inn cross-dressing event is still in. We've made it more modern. We made the facility like we did in the original game. The physical unease would be staggering. So that was no good. Um, honestly, playing the original game, um, it's obviously very, very old graphics, cartoony graphics. It doesn't hold up super well in that regard. Uh, but yeah, that environment is pretty freaking weird. Even with that. So I can't even imagine with like realistic breathtaking graphics it would be probably um unsettling i would say yeah no thanks yeah pass there's some weird shit that goes on in there but i'm curious what more modern means uh, i really yeah, hope I wonder, you still get a wig and a dress because yeah i'm not sure you never yeah. really catch the you never get things for the breasts if I remember, but somehow Cloud all of a sudden has um, a figure. I will say that. I mean, oh. duh. Just thanks. Uh, speaking of breasts, 
That's a transition right there. Uh, mm. What? No, that wasn't a good one. <clears throat> no, I mean that was fantastic. No, I mean <laughs> it. It works. It was a transition. Uh, Final Fantasy VII remake continued. Tifa's chest size reduced in Final Fantasy VII remake per Square Enix ethics department request. Um, so this is one is interesting to me, right? Because I've seen a lot of those titles that talk about like the ethics department. But when you actually go through the articles, it was really like a stylistic choice by the designers to make her look more proportioned and actually make her look like a human being and not like a fucking Barbie doll. Oh, so, interesting. Um, yeah, it, I don't know if it's just clickbait titles or whatever, but um, it, it wasn't because of, at least it doesn't appear to be because of sexist reasons or anything like that. It was genuinely to make her appear to be more proportioned. Gotcha. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Um so there was initially, I believe, concept out there, uh, like official concept art that had her um, looking different, I will say. Um, that was along the time when they showed the demo where Barrett had a much higher voice than his new voice does. Um, if you try to Google Tifa pictures, though, be warned, you will find a lot of them. A lot of them are not inappropriate or are inappropriate. Excuse me. Um, so I could not find them. Because I felt really weird um, trying to scroll through pages on Google of uh, Tifa pictures. That explains all the women in bikinis. In yes, yeah. that that was that mm. slash. That's mainly somebody using my music. Uh, no comment on that one. Uh, Where's the uh, ethics department for Dead or Alive? Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they have one. Uh, they don't have an <laughs> ethics department. They have a physics department. Ah, uh, yes, um, yes. yes. And they are prolific. Jiggle <laughs> physics department. So, there you go. Um, yeah. Let's see. Going on to Ubisoft, actually. Uplay Plus. I actually got this in my email to... I think it was today. Today or yesterday. Um, so the Uplay Plus, which we kind of talked about during our E3 coverage. So it's going to be a subscription service, $14.99 a month. Um, immediately you get access to 100 plus games on PC. That includes any brand new games like Ghost Recon Breakpoint and then Watch Dogs Legion. It also includes the more... I'm not sure if they, said, they didn't say Collector's Edition, but like Deluxe versions or Digital Deluxe, whatever versions there are. And you get automatic access to betas and early gameplay, stuff like that. It is available for free uh, on launch. So from September 3rd to September 30th for free. Um, so pretty cool way to check it out. Uh, they give some little stats, so 100 plus PC games, premium editions, there you go, new releases. Okay, literally what I just said. Uh, and you can cancel anytime. So that is nice. They're kind of mod modeling it after like the EA origin stuff like that where you can cancel any time which I know several of us have um, routinely done that where we sign up for EA origin access for five dollars and immediately cancel it just so we can play games for free for a little bit um, mm -hmm. to do yeah, that it's so a little different with this though because this is 15 so I'm yeah kind of you know back off a little bit yep very true um, I don't know what do you guys think do you guys have any interest in this so I'm interested, uh, based on the initial discussions, that Uplay will somehow be tied into Stadia. And so being able to, the theory of maybe being able to play these Uplay games through Stadia really, really interests me. Stadia is going to be free or it's going to be $10 a month for the 4K and then to pay the $15 a month to get my 100 games anywhere, then yeah, absolutely. It's a slam dunk for me. Yeah, that's a good point. What up, Lampy? I don't know what you mean by OMG a beard. I'm guessing he's not talking what about up, me, so he's talking about one of the two of you. Uh, we, we've always had beards? Yeah, I think. I guess I've grown out a little bit, but... Uh, yeah, so for me, you play plus... 15 steep. But You think so? I think so. For how many new games they put out that I'm interested in, it's not that often. Once a quarter, maybe. So, if it is once a quarter, yeah, I guess that pays off. So, it's $45, essentially, per quarter than playing a new game. But, really, Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Division 2 are the only games I've played 
by Ubisoft in the past year or so. So I'm not sure I would necessarily get my money out. So yeah, Roller Champions uh, did come to mind, but that I think is going to be a free game, I would assume. It is. So, so yeah, I don't know, right? So we talked about Xbox uh, Game Pass <clears throat> Ultimate, $15 a month. You're going to get the free online play and access to all their games. This, you're already going to get the free online play plus access to their games. I think $15 is a fair price to pay their to play their library. And like you were mentioning earlier, right? So if you have four of those services at $15 a month, you call it Stadia, uh, Xbox Gold, plus this, plus EA's thing. There's your $60 a month. There's your one game a month. And you're getting access to hundreds of games. That seems fair to me. Yeah. That So I will give Xbox the $15 a month because it's PC and Xbox and presumably xCloud or something like that once you, you get to that point. You play is PC only, at least right now. And Mm -hmm. if they can bring it to Stadia, which I think they are, sounds like they will, then I think it's a different story. But if it is just PC, then I'm like, eh, I don't know. So if it was $10 a month, I think that'd be more reasonable, similar to the Xbox Game Pass on just Xbox. Historically, $10 a month. Um, PlayStation Now, for example, being $20 a month, I've never been interested because I don't think it's worth $20 a month. If that was $10 a month, I'd probably have it in a heartbeat. Um, but, sure. Yeah. I don't know. I'm definitely going to try it for free for the month of September. If you do want to do that, you can go and register for it. You have to do that by August 15th. So you got uh, two months. So we'll, I'm sure, be reminding you before that happens. Uh, Pharaoh commenting... You play will eventually come to consoles, just like Xbox Pass rolled out on Xbox, then PC a year later. I, I hope so. I'm also curious what that means, though, for PlayStation and Xbox, because usually when you're buying them on those systems, you're getting a portion. They're getting a portion of that fee. Not sure if. You're yeah, I think you those walls well, are being torn down a little bit. Fair. Well, yeah, and we so EA has already done this a little bit, so. Um, it doesn't tie in directly, but just like you have your EA, like your Origin stuff uh, for PC, they have uh, EA access for consoles, which is pretty much the same thing. Um, that is on consoles? Yeah, I've okay. done it before. Okay. Um, but it, huh. at that time when I did it, it didn't tie in exactly to what I had, like to the Origin EA for your PC. So they essentially had two different, like, uh, oh, models. interesting. But I did it once I was going through the Mass Effect series again, and I um, I signed up for that. And same thing, digitally downloaded, played the game. Uh, and right. I think that, but it still, it still was, five, at that time it was $5 a month right? Um, for that. So, I mean, there's ways to make it work, put it that way. So maybe they're testing out for PC, and then they'll find a, a console version. Uh, I'm not yeah. surprised that they'll do yeah. that. A lot of their games come to console anyway, so it's not like they're primarily a PC-focused game company. Yeah, that's that's why I'm kind of I I want to hear more about it coming to consoles. Although to be honest, from September to like early February or so, I probably will have it because of Ghost Recon Breakpoint and then Watch Dogs Legion. So yep, agreed, mm-hmm. agreed. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it out just for those two. I think that's enough, right? Because if that's 120 bucks out of those two games, yeah, yeah right, might exactly. As well do a couple yeah. months, what, and, nine months and out of that. Play both. So yeah, um, yeah. I'm blanking. Release date on Watch Dogs Legion. February? Uh, is that this year or is that 2020? March 6, 2020. Oh, I just yes. Assumed everything that's what it is. Dang. Three days after Final Fantasy VII Remake. So, yep. Uh, although, Yikes. shit. It's square. We'll see if March 3rd actually happens. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, hope, I hope so. We'll probably not. I uh, think I was, I was looking up some stuff on that and... <clears throat> I feel like they will, but then the the bigger question is like, how long does it take for episode two to come out? You know what I mean? Yeah. How long is episode one? It's Midgar. It's a whole right. reimagined story, but is that ten hours? Well, it should be more than ten hours, but is it two Blu-ray hours, discs better be more hours? than ten hours. Yeah. So we'll see. Uh, regardless, it doesn't matter. I'm play it. Uh, first says March of next year is so packed though. Yeah, Q1 of it's next Q1. year. It's crazy. Well, yeah. Q1 a little into Q2 is going to be crazy, including rumors of Last of Us 2 coming out in February yep. of 2020. 
Um, so Ashley Johnston, uh, or Johnson, mm-hmm. sorry, uh, the voice of I Ellie, forgot. said on uh, a Critical Role video, which I actually haven't watched, um, that she does coming out during a month that starts with the letter F. What? <laughs> Why? Why would you say that? But anyways, uh, so yeah, sounds like February. Um, the rumors were from Jason Schreier we reported on, I think, like two weeks ago. Um, about it presumably coming out in February, but kind of wasn't confirmed. This is just another instance kind of hinting towards that. Well, not so much hinting. Mm-hmm. Pretty much directly saying it, but we'll see if she's right. Uh, however, the uh, game designer, lead game designer, I believe he is, Neil Druckmann. Director. He's the uh, game, game director. director. Um, says, FY, every time someone asks for the release date, the game gets pushed back by five minutes. And then I love that Corey Barlog commented so uh lead game design for game director for god of war says i really want to spam when's the release date now so <laughs> yeah oh yeah and then Big i didn't even notice Corey. troy baker responds to Corey barlog stand gifts and then more gifts and i really wish i was friends with that group of people because that'd be amazing but someday guys someday so yeah, yeah. um yeah, wow. Early 2020 is going to be a magical time. Final Fantasy VII, Watchdog Legions, you got mm, Cyberpunk. Oh my god. It's going to be so many, be so many, so many video games. Mm-hmm. You think I could take a quarter off of work? Does that work? Can do that? Uh, I was actually going to quit and live off my 401k. So Okay, yeah. I think that's, that's probably smart. fair. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Pharaoh commenting, they recently said in an interview they aren't even working on episode two yet, which is really surprising. Uh, yeah. I'm not kind of surprised yeah. because it's square. And that's a, it, that's the <laughs> thing too. So like you know, obviously everyone thinks about Midgar when they think about Final Fantasy uh, seven, but you know, a lot of Final Fantasy at like past that, like you're in open fields. It's like almost like a completely different environment in oh, some yeah. cases than you know that and so yeah they'll be using obviously the same engine and stuff like that but you have to really rethink your whole environments and your whole structures again when you, when you start to look at these other episodes yeah i'm very um, curious so. to see how they deal with the open world and the airship and stuff like that because it mm-hmm. yeah it's yeah it'll be interesting how they do it and the choke yeah. was like come on choke are going to be so cool in high def uh they were cool final fantasy 15 bro it's true way cool yeah that's fair them? That's fair. Ooh. That was the best part of the game. Uh, let's see. Moving on. Mike, going to hand it over to you on this one. Yeah. Lismato says, bitch, we'll still be playing Pokemon. And he's probably right. However, uh, for those of you guys who aren't up to date, Pokemon Sword and Shield has announced that there is no national decks coming to the game. They're calling it Dexit. We're all really pissed about oh it. Oh Which is amazing. Dexit. You nerds. We have t-shirts. Um, yes, so in Ooh. most Pokemon games... Sorry, that's a great t-shirt idea. You should do that. Dexit? Yeah. Yeah, dude. 100%. We're coming. Do it now. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Cool. Get it, Get um, it while it's hot. Yeah. Uh, so most Pokemon games, once you beat the game beat the Elite Four or whatever the equivalent happens to be in that particular game, you unlock what's called the National Dex. And the National Dex allows you to catalog every Pokemon to date in that Dex. Um, This is huge for collectors like me. It's a lot of the reason why I enjoy playing these games is going through and filling out my Pokedex to the best of my ability. Personally, I don't much care for the battle mechanics. I don't really care for, like, breeding perfect I'd beat Pokemon. It's really all about just collecting them. In Pokemon Sun and Moon, uh, they did not actually have a national deck. So once you beat the game, you that was it. Like You had access to those 400 Pokemon or whatever it was that were in the game. Um, and anything you brought over outside of that was not actually able to be cataloged. So you could own the Pokemon, but they didn't actually show up in your Pokedex, which is super disappointing, right? Like, what would be the point yeah. if you can't see all the information on yeah. them and all that? So once again, Pokemon Short and Shield is... is looking like it's going to go that route as well. There will be no Pokedex, or National Dex, rather, which is surprising to me with a new generation coming out. 
Um, this will be the second generation in a row that they haven't done a, a national dex. Um, and they're already at like 802 or 803 Pokemon plus whatever this Gen 8 is. Um, so it's a little frustrating. Lots of speculation on why this is happening. Um, some people suggest that it has to do with the character models and the character animations. Though some mm -hmm. hackers have actually found that, I don't know if this is true, so take it with a grain of salt, but it looks as though some of the character models have actually been reused since Pokemon X and Y, which is six years old, maybe even more. Or they're just reusing those those characters. I mean, it's their Game Boy consoles, right? So how much really do they need to put in? Yeah. The, so even if it's like they just take generalities of them or something like that. Right. So speaking of generalities, uh, this spawned a whole conversation on Twitter where some idiot was talking about how um, I say idiot, but uh, that it only should take five minutes to model those Pokemon. He could he could model those Pokemon in five minutes, which has started the five minute challenge, which is hilarious so what a bunch of smart ass artists have done have gone through and tried to model pokemon in five minutes and some of these things oh, are freaking it. hilarious it was at the bottom of the last page you're on yeah oh there we go <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, there you go so yeah all of these pokemon are people's attempts at trying to model these pokemon <laughs> in five minutes and they're freaking hilarious so, is pretty um, amazing <laughs> yes <laughs> So if you guys get a chance, go ahead and check those things out. Uh, personally, I'm a bit pissed off that there's no national decks. Uh, some people are saying they're not even going to play the game. I don't know that I'll go that far, but I certainly don't know that I'll be playing till February or March if there's no national decks. I'll go through the Elite Four, I'll collect everything in the game, call it 300 Pokemon or whatever, um, and then that'll be it. Uh, the one interesting thing I think about this they're putting all of this effort and all this time and money and energy into building Pokemon Home, which is like your Pokebank, but across everything. They were even talking about trading your Pokemon Go Pokemon to your, your Pokebank and, and moving things all around. So why would you create this service with the next Pokemon game releasing, the one that is arguably the most highly anticipated Pokemon game of all time, and not have a National Dex? Yeah, that's bizarre to me. <laughs> Yeah, it's so, counterintuitive. Who knows? Maybe it'll be an add-on later on because they're now on consoles. They're able to do sort of do more things you know, like a lot that. of console games yeah. are doing. Right, exactly. It's it's a DLC, God forbid, or maybe it's um, you know, like a later drop that they do or something like that. So we'll see. Um a little disappointing though, for sure. Uh quick note, there's no way this guy did these in five minutes. <laughs> these are actually good. Yeah, he's He's damn good. It's impressive. Well, Mike will be here to keep you guys up on Pokemon news. I'm going to play the game and not know Same. any of the Pokemon <laughs> except for uh, the original 50. Well, so, there you go. Uh, let's see. Going on to more Nintendo news. Uh, Breath of the Wild is getting a sequel. Hope everybody knew that. Spoilers. Uh, Breath of the Wild getting a sequel because team had too many DLC ideas. So from Jason Schreier, um, I feel like every time we report something of substance, it's coming from Jason Schreier. Um, he's got so, a lot of credibility nowadays, that's for sure. Yeah, man. He, I, I feel like he's like the number one journalist slash only journalist out there uh, <laughs> that we ever hear kind of these breaking article, articles from. Um, so... Definitely a good one. It's uh, rather lengthy as well. Kind of like that Metro interview. But another interview, just talking about Breath of the Wild 2. Uh, of course, no dates or anything like that. Um, no timeline on it. The hope is using... And I'm not sure why they use the Link's Awakening uh, image here. But the Breath of the Wild 2, hopefully using the same image and things like that, it will be quicker than the traditional Zelda um, time frame. But we shall see. They're still with the same hardware limitations, right? Like, it's still the Switch. So I imagine yeah. the, the incredible engine that they've already built uh, and all those character models and stuff, based on the conversations that these basically stemmed from um, DLC expansion ideas, I imagine a lot of the, the resources will be reused. Yeah, I, I, I almost put an article in here about a the Switch Mini um, that got rumored out there. So mm. apparently there was some Chinese 
uh, accessory company that emailed somebody about, hey, we're going to be having these products ready for when it releases. And they just look super small, like almost like cell phone size, like a large cell phone, but cell phone size. Uh, I didn't want to put it in there because it just seems super sketchy and like easily could have just been somebody fucking around. So uh, Pharaoh's calling it holiday 2020. And uh, yeah, that makes sense to me. Um, I'm curious if it's holiday 2020 or 2021, though, um, the way that... For the Switch? Zelda games go. For the... Oh, the for Zelda Breath game. of the Wild, gotcha. too. Yeah. Or gotcha, gotcha, yeah. Breath of the Wild, whatever. Yeah. Sequel. Yeah, probably closer to 2021, my guess. Yeah, we'll see, though. Uh, more Nintendo news. Dr. Mario World, uh, the new mobile game, got a release date of July 10th. I believe there are sign-ups for early play going out um, as well. This, oh, cool. Yeah, so it's actually like reversed Dr. Mario, if you guys ever played Dr. Mario. This game, uh, for me, actually holds quite a bit of sentimental stuff. My grandma used to play this and hog the Nintendo. She played more Nintendo than I did this when I was a child. Um, That's awesome, man. So much that, that awesome. So much that her old TV, like one of those really you know old thick tvs big ass like TVs, you, yeah. it was like you pull the heavy thing to turn it on yeah and one yeah, of those, yeah one and of those, it made yeah. a high-pitched whine and uh, everything got staticky well she played so much of this that dr mario for the most part is a static image except for like the pieces moving but the frame and everything so when you literally turn this tv off you could see you can still see the, the frame of Dr. Mario. That's on it. so cool. Uh, <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah. So uh, I'm excited to play just honestly out of the sentimentality of it, but it'll be cool for, you know, phone. Good little puzzle type game. Um, and it's Nintendo. So hopefully it's not too pay to win on their mobile device. Yeah. I mean, these they are great games of, uh, for mobile stuff. too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I really enjoyed their Mario Kart. Mario Run was okay, um, but this is this is obviously quick games, right? Three, five minutes, whatever, playing at the bus stop or waiting at the DMV or whatever. Right. This is a good one to sort of mobilize. Yeah, I like it because I think they've been doing a good job at, you know, pay to win aside. I think they've done a good job at making a good mobile market and not mm -hmm. making taking my Switch games away and putting it on mobile. Right, it seems to be pretty That's distinct fair. as what I'm getting at the Switch game and these like lighter little mobile games. Yeah, and, and they look super clean. Well, I mean, yep. based on this video, it looks clean. The um, Mario Kart beta that we get to do was super clean. Ran yep. phenomenal on the phone. Um, better than a lot even like Galaxy Heroes and stuff like that, I feel, didn't run nearly as good as that game. So, uh, fair comments. I think at E3 2020, we'll get new updates to the Switch with a bundle of Zelda and upgraded unit for holiday 2020. Yeah, um, it Maybe. seems fair. I think the mini or light version or whatever is probably going to be coming out before the more the, powerful edition or whatever yeah. from the sounds of it. Um, but yeah, we shall see. Apologies if anybody can hear uh, the dog and girlfriend in the background. Uh, continuing on. Um, oh, that's just more Dr. Mario. Excuse me. Uh, Mario Maker 2 uh, coming out June 28th, so just over a week away. Yeah, crazy. Uh, I'm excited for that. We're going to have some sweet squad modes in this one. Um, so many. So the first Mario Maker, uh, of course, on the Wii U. So, you know, tons of people played it. Um, you had the touchpad, so you could design levels on that and everything like there. The Switch, a little interesting one. They're bringing in controller support for making things because you, of course, can dock your Switch to your TV and then cannot use your screen. Uh, but they highly recommend, um, people have gotten to play it, that if you do get into the maker mode, you're probably going to want to pick up a stylus for your Switch um, just to use it a little more easily. Um, they talk a little bit about, um, Chris Culler from this Kotaku article, talks a little bit about the main story as well being about five hours long um, and really being more of a uh, hidden tutorial, I guess, is how he, a stealth tutorial or something I think he phrased it as, where essentially you're playing through the story, the story's good and all that, but it's really 
using it to teach you how to make levels and make more complex levels and stuff like that. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, Dreams for PlayStation VR kind of does something similar to that. So Yeah. Are you guys picking this up? Probably not initially, um, but it'll likely be on my Christmas list. Gotcha. Yeah, I don't really plan on picking this one up, but I plan on you picking it up so we can do squad mode. Do yeah, do that's do do. why I'm not going to buy it right now. <laughs> See how this works, guys? All you viewers yeah, out you there. You buy everything. John, you buy everything. <laughs> you don't not buy games. Archer Farms. We need to talk. If yeah. I'm going to be buying all these games, I need you, Archer Farms. Buy the Archer Farms, too. Come on. Need you. That Archer Farms budget is as much as a game budget, guys. Come That's on. That's true. I know That's it true. is. <laughs> we hungry. Uh, oh, it's actually out of reach right now, too. Damn it. I kind of want some. Uh, but yeah, so excited for that. And then really side tangent, just because it's a Nintendo Switch game and is soon, tomorrow, my friend Pedro comes out by Devolver Digital. So, Dang. Is that really tomorrow? Really tomorrow already. So, uh, yeah, I got to... Pick that guy up. Archer Farms. These Matos in the chat crying out for your help. Talk to us. Email me back. I emailed you like two months ago. Come on. <laughs> write your congressman. Please let them know. Have Archer Farms get in contact. Please write your local congressman to reach out to Archer Farms for me. The At Force Inept really wants to talk to you guys. So. Uh, let's see. Going into more of my VR training category. Again, you can catch those Thursday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern, except tomorrow because it. on Myth Brigade. Um, Beat Saber, which everybody knows I'm a fan of, got videos on. Doesn't have a release date yet, besides 2019. But for the Oculus Quest, which I have now figured out how to stream, so excited about that, will have 360 degree levels. I, I don't know how I feel about it. But it looks pretty cool. It looks like I'm going to get dizzy. It, yeah. Uh, I'm curious That's to trippy, see. man. Yeah. I'm sure it's going to take some getting used to for sure. Um, but pretty cool. Oculus Quest only right now. Confirmed. Uh, but yeah. So as soon as that bad boy comes out, I will be playing that and streaming and probably getting dizzy and whatever. Uh, side note on that too, there is a new expansion for Beat Saber with Imagine Dragons. So they've got, I think it's like eight or ten Imagine Dragons songs. Um, the levels, the level design's phenomenal on them. I just played them today, not all of them, all, almost all of them today as my Beat Saber workout since it was raining outside. And yeah, kind of slow paced because it's Imagine Dragons. I like some of their songs, but um, excellent level design. So definitely check that out. Hmm. Ah, uh, dude, I can you imagine like whatever, like expert plus plus, and you're just like, oh yeah, dude, literally just all over the place. I I can yeah. pass, I think, two songs and not consistently on expert plus right now. Expert, I can pretty much nail everything. Expert plus is just an entirely different level. I can't even begin to imagine that on a 360 mode. I would be puking probably by the end of it. Or just passed out. Or have you seen? Dead. Have you seen the uh, the Darth Maul mode? Yes. Yes. Um, I've seen that. Holy yeah. shit! So badass. I'm scared to do that. That's all I had about that. I'm gonna break that. I'm. A, I would totally break my shit. So. Oh yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, dead after one level. Uh, that's basically me right now on expert plus. Mm -hmm. Like I have to. I'm winded. And have to take a break after even attempting a level. If I pass a level, I'm like done for a few minutes. So yeah, my hands get too sweaty during those levels. Like by the end of it, the controllers are slipping and sliding. Like it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, let's see. On to some deals of the week. Uh, we got Epic Game Stores. We talked about last week. Enter the Gungeon. Uh, that is free through tomorrow, June twentieth. Um, in the Epic Game Store again. Don't need to download it. You don't need to pay or sign up or anything. Just Redeem it, add to your library. So make sure you check that out. Got one day left if you're watching this live at twitch.tv slash Lately Assaulted Squad. Uh, let's see, the next one starting tomorrow, June 20th, and going through the following week, June 27th, got Rebel Galaxy. I don't know what this is, but it looks Everybody like it's up my alley. Now, Dion, I'm going to look to you because I feel like you would have either played this or know what it is. 
No. I, I know. <laughs> Shocking. This is a Miley. It's a little too much of a Star Wars rip just in the name, but uh, uh, I don't know much. I don't know much about it. I can't really speak to it. Disappointing. Disappointing. Uh, and I don't know what this Twitter is. Oh, that's just me. That's me at Four Snapped. You guys can follow me if you want. So, uh, that's all I got for the deals. Um, so I think we'll go into what we're playing. And wow, we're actually sort of on time. Grand, we did have a little bit of a shit show nice. in the start of it. So, yeah. Uh, uh, Mike, where are you playing? So, uh, this week I've been playing Days Gone quite a bit. Uh, for those of you guys who caught my platinum grind on Monday, uh, got about five or six trophies on Monday. Um, I then got a handful of them um, yesterday. I think I have four left, so uh, the goal is to knock those out next Monday on the Platinum Grind and actually get the Platinum on the Grind. Um, I also picked up Assassin's Creed for PlayStation because even though I have it for my PC, I really want the trophies, so I bought it again. So I'm going to start that one. <laughs> it's, and get... it's a worthwhile game, though, that's for sure. It is. It absolutely is. Um, so uh, I'll start getting into that one, and then as I come off of Days Gone, um, I'll likely be working on that one in the background and be streaming the Walking Dead final chapter to get the platinum in that one, and then by that time I should be getting close to the end of uh, Assassin's Creed. So we'll try that one again too. Nice. Yeah, what you got? Um, I didn't really play too much this week. Actually, I think the, all I did was a little bit of Battlefield Five, um, just in anticipation for some of the stuff that'll come out later on and some of the new chapters. I do plan on picking some of that stuff up. Had a little bit of an itch, and the, the game's still pretty solid. Um, mainly for me, though, uh, will really be the backlog series, so tune in Saturday mornings. Uh, I'm going to finish up Battlefront 2, but then I'm going to start my friend Pedro. Um, and have that one be one of the ones to go through because I'm excited about that one. How that's, how's that your backlog? It, because I'm gonna buy it and then I haven't played it yet, so then it's my backlog, John. Oh, okay, don't doubt me, bro. I got you. I got you. I got you. Why weren't you getting Stadia again? You have too much shit in your backlog. Is that is that a thing? Correct. That, 86 uh, games. So right. I mean, I just want to make sure that we're all understanding what's actually going on here. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I'm not gonna count go. my games. Although yeah, you you don't want to count your games. I don't want to no. count my games. Uh, although seeing Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven in my Steam list right now looks pretty cool. Uh, let's see, I am playing. Oh man, kind of all over the place. So Assassin's Creed Odyssey on PlayStation. Um, I just beat the main story. Is Cassandra? There's still kind of ancillary things I want to like do spoilers and stuff like that. Like stuff that. Besides side missions, you can still continue on and kind of further the story if you want. There's also the DLC, which I'm playing on playing, which I'm kind of starting one of those arcs, if you will, that's in the main game but leads towards the DLC. So I'm kind of starting that going off. Main story I enjoyed a lot. Um, the character development, even just the side quests are just amazing in that game. So well worth it. One of the... One of my favorite games um, the past few years, actually, and one that I was kind of hesitant to get at first. Uh, let's see. On Nintendo Switch, um, I'm going to be playing my friend Pedro starting tomorrow, uh, but I'm playing Final Fantasy IX right now, so a few hours into that, losing all of my stupid cards because I forgot how much I hate the card game mechanics in that version in Final Fantasy IX because there's random... I guess, factors that play into your cards, and it's infuriating. Um, Galaxy of Heroes, playing too much of that. PC, I'm kind of in a weird spot where I don't know what to play. I just kind of keep going back and forth. Like, I started Coder 2 again. I started EVE Online because with Twitch Prime right now, you can get a free, like, crate that kind of helps you start off in EVE Online, which is free to play. Um, so that's kind of cool. You can check it out. If you got Amazon Prime, that means you have Twitch Prime, which gets you free games. You get all this, you know, free offers and stuff for different games. Also gets you a free subscription, which you can give to somebody oh, in the community or us. Like, that's crazy. us. You should give it to us. Yeah, um, that's neat. But if you hate us for some reason and want us to fail, then you can give it to somebody else in the community if you want. But make sure you use it because Amazon has enough money. So yeah, uh, what was I saying? So 
EVE Online. Uh, and then for VR training, I did, it wasn't quite VR training, the whole thing I'm doing, but I did do a um, Vanishing Your Realms um, stream the other day. Uh, I probably will continue with that because that's kind of a fun RPG dungeon crawler. Um, and then I will kind of think going into like budget cuts or blade and sorcery or um, uh, Arizona Sunshine since I haven't finished that one. But let me know what you think, what you want me to play on the streams. Um, it's VR, so it's kind of a little weird to stream. Thinking about just doing Vader Immortal in a one shot because that's about 45 minutes long. I've already played already, but I think that'd be fun for people to watch. So yeah, yeah let me know. Um, and yeah, we'll figure it out. Pharaoh Games says he's playing WoW Classic. I am salty as fuck. Not slightly salty. Fully no. salty. Mm. So fully. I, I can't be that mad, right? Because I got into the original beta last uh, September, October, November. 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 Um, so that was a lot of fun, but I was really hoping to get back in. But at the same token, I don't know that I want to play again and then have to start all over a third time when it actually comes out. So... Yeah. But enjoy it, Pharaoh. I'm really jealous. He's gonna come steal your account. Mm -hmm. So watch out for that. Uh let's see. Anything else before we sign off for the night? You guys got anything? This guy alert Final Fantasy so. 7 tweeted. What did they tweet? Breaking news. Final Fantasy 7 just tweeted. Here's what they had to say. I said I can pull up. But my <laughs> Discord's being dumb, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. As always, we really appreciate it. Uh, if you're watching live at twitch.tv slash slightly salted squad, thank you for being part of the chat. Thank you for engaging. It makes the um, dynamic a lot better. Uh, if you're listening to YouTube, thank you. Hit that subscribe button. If you're listening on podcast, thanks. Let us know which one you're listening on. Because that's cool. Uh, otherwise, check us out. Patreon, Twitter, Instagram. Make sure you check out and join our Discord so you can play with us. Um, whether you got VR or non-VR, we got tons of stuff. Yeah. Cool. Oversaturation, no. We can't start over. However, you can find this episode on YouTube. Ooh, you can. Check us out there. And eventually, we're going to just have YouTube.com slash Slightly Salt Squad. But we're not at that point yet. So help us get to that point. And if yeah, you know, like our stuff, so we can do that. Yeah, like our stuff, then maybe Archer Farms will finally contact us. So if you guys could just do that, that'd be great. Maybe big goals, spread, spread the big word. goals. Archer Farms goal number one. <laughs> Everything else we'll figure out after that. So. Yeah. But yeah, until next time. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for showing up late at Oversaturation. And we'll see you guys next time. Stay salted. Bye. Bye.